how did I go from shooting images like this, this, and this with a point and shoot camera to taking images like this, this, and this, and working for clients such as KFC, Great Rose Food Magazine, Food and Wine, Food and Travel, and Crate and Barrel? And how on earth did I manage to get a five figure salary from a three day shoot? Let's talk about all of this and more in today's video. I'm spilling the beans on my journey from zero dollars to six figures. And I'm also sharing a few learnings that you can apply so that you can do the same. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, the best place for food photographers, food bloggers, and content creators to not only improve their images, but also make money from it. My name is Sukaina. I am a professional food photographer and educator. And if you've been watching my channel over the last few weeks, then you'll notice that today's video is a little bit different. So today, what I really wanna do is share with you my journey from how I started as a struggling food blogger, working for free, earning absolutely no money, shooting mediocre images like the ones you just saw, to earning consistent six figures every year. And I did all of that working part-time, traveling the world, and working for dream clients. I'm really hoping that as I tell you my story, it's gonna show you what's possible for you and your own life. I wanna show you where I started and how I evolved into the professional food photographer and educator that I am today. Trust me when I say that the journey to a six-figure food photographer does not happen overnight, no matter what anyone tells you on Instagram. But also, if it's possible for me, if it's possible for so many of my students, then it's definitely possible for you. So no matter what your skill levels are currently, no matter where you live or what you're doing currently, and no matter what equipment you own, I'll be sharing some mistakes I've done, some valuable tips on how you can avoid them, and just kind of take you on a behind the scenes of my journey and how I got to where I am today. So let's start off with a trip down memory lane. Now, many, many moons ago, when I was just a baby, 18 years old, I had just graduated from high school in Tanzania. So kind of in the boonies, and I moved to London to study optometry. Yep, you heard me right. I can barely say the word. I actually graduated with a degree in optometry from City University. Now, I worked as an optometrist for about three years in London. I didn't realize this at the time, but I found no joy in my job. I'd have to drag myself out of bed and go into work every morning. Now, I'm not sure if this is because of the miserable cold weather in London or because I didn't really love what I was doing. And after three years, me and my husband packed it all up and we moved to Dubai. Now, I was pretty sure at this stage that I was ready to retire and kind of not work at all. So we moved over to Dubai in 2007, which was really perfect timing because as soon as we arrived, the recession happened and the chances of me finding any job were practically nil. Big fat zero, nada. So what do you do when you're jobless and in a recession? You're right, you guessed it, you have a baby. And that's exactly what I did. So in 2009, I worked on my best project so far and Mariam came into our lives. And this was probably the first time in my life that I actually started cooking from scratch. This was a way of just kind of trying out new recipes. So I started reading a ton of food blogs and magazines at that time. And I actually started my own food blog, which by the way, no longer exists. So don't even try and Google it. Anyways, when I started this blog, I quickly realized that more than cooking, more than writing recipes, and more than just blogging in general, what I truly enjoyed was the styling and food photography. And I think many of you are probably nodding your heads at this time. So that's where my love affair of food photography started. Now, the only slight problem was that this is what my images look like, which meant that nobody was gonna read my blog, nobody was gonna cook my recipes, no brands would wanna work with me, and nobody would pay for my images because they weren't that great quality. So it was at this time that I shifted all of my focus from reading other food blogs to Googling, learning how to take better pictures, watching YouTube, trying to figure out how my camera worked and subscribing to about a bazillion food magazines for inspiration. Just when I thought things were falling into place, I found what I loved, I was kind of getting somewhere, my blogging and photography journey came to an abrupt end. Well, I wouldn't say end, I would probably say to a halt. So on my 27th birthday, a date I will never forget, I was actually diagnosed with cancer, Hodgkin's lymphoma to be exact. And I still remember my first thought that went through my head, it was not chemo, it was not losing. Oh. And now back to your regularly scheduled program. And I still remember my first thought that went through my head. 
It wasn't chemo. It wasn't whether I would survive. It wasn't who would look after my six month old daughter. But the fact was that I was going to lose my hair and my main worry was how were my parents going to cope with my diagnosis. So it was at this time I kind of set my camera aside, not out of choice, but more out of necessity because honestly, I literally didn't have the physical energy to even pick up my camera as I did my chemo and radiation. So six months into my treatment, it was February 2010. It was just one month before Mariam's first birthday. I was given the all clear. So it was around this time that I actually went back to work part time as an optometrist. And I still clearly remember to this day, I think I called home about 57 times. What did Mariam have for dinner? What did she have for lunch? Did she finish her meal? What time did she go to sleep? What time did she wake up? Did she go for her afternoon walk? Did she think about me? Did she cry? When I got home that evening, I remember swerving into my parking lot, literally running up the stairs so that I could just see my daughter. And that was kind of my light bulb moment, right? It was in that exact time that I realized I hate my job as an optometrist. I hate optometry. I hate leaving my family and my baby girl for a job that I don't even love. And heck, that doesn't even pay me that much. So the very next day, I called it quits. I gave in my resignation and I never went back. Now, I was actually really lucky because at the time, I had my husband who is super supportive. Not only was he supporting me emotionally, but also financially. And it didn't take long for me to realize that actually I really wanted to make food photography my career. This is what gave me joy. This is what got me excited in the morning. I had so much passion for food photography that I didn't even care at that point if I was ever gonna get paid for it. Making money from food photography or making it into a career was not even a thought. It was purely a hobby that I poured my heart and soul into. And that kind of brings me to my first tip that I have for you. If you're looking to transition into food photography or blogging as a career, as a business, I highly recommend that you stay in your full-time current job for as long as possible or until you know that this is a feasible career for you. And when I say feasible, what I really mean is, do you have a steady stream of clients coming in? Are you getting paid for your food photography? Are you actually able to earn money from this? Because honestly, I had my husband to support me financially at this point. It would be highly irresponsible of me to tell you to quit cold turkey like I did and just hope for the best. There really does need to be some strategy when it comes to making food photography your career. You need to be in it for the long haul. And if somebody is advising you on Instagram to give up everything and to just go all in, you really shouldn't be listening to that person. Building a food photography career and business takes time. It's not something that's going to happen overnight. It also takes money and investment, whether it's in your skills or your equipment or your monthly software. So unless you're financially stable from savings or from a partner who's supporting you, quitting your job is not the answer because it's not really how hard you work, it's about how smart you work. But we'll get back to that in a moment. Okay, so let's go back to my story. So I had quit optometry for good. I would literally cook two or three recipes a week for my blog. I actually upgraded my camera from a point and shoot to a secondhand crop sensor, which I had no idea how to use. But in my head, I thought, right, if I upgrade my equipment, I'm actually gonna get better quality photos. I would spend up to 12 hours a day on Google and on YouTube trying to figure out my camera, what all the buttons meant, and just kind of trying to figure out food photography. And trust me when I say that at that time, there were hardly any resources available to actually improve your food photography. But when you're so passionate about something, you will literally find any way to achieve your dreams. So within a few months, my photography was picking up, I was getting more confident, and I was actually contacted by a local magazine. Now, initially they ran an article on me and my story, but then they also hired me to do some food photography work for them. And straight after that, I got my first cookbook job, photographing a cookbook for a local author. I thought I'd had it made. A magazine job, a cookbook job, I would have clients lining up. I remember thinking, right, I'm getting paid for a job that I love, that's my hobby, that I would do for free. I'm working part-time, I'm getting to travel, stay home, spend time with my family. It doesn't get better than this. But then reality hit me because it was crickets. I was expecting my calendar to get booked up, my emails to be overflowing with clients wanting to work with me. I mean, at the end of the day, my food photography was really good if I say so myself, right? And I had improved so much since I'd started. I was also so much more confident with my images. I was confident on set working with clients. I'd done magazine work. I'd done a cookbook. So I'd already gotten a client or two and I was already earning money. So why on earth was I not getting booked out? Why were the emails not coming? 
And that brings me to tip number two, that when you're first starting out as a food photography business, and even if you're a seasoned pro that's been at this for a while, market, market, market. You need to market yourself. Don't just rely on clients finding you and reaching out to you. It was kind of at this stage that I realized that if I really wanted to make this hobby into like a proper career where I'm earning money on a regular basis, I'm gonna need more clients. And if they're not reaching out to me, then I need to start reaching out to them. And that's when I started cold pitching to clients amongst a whole host of other marketing techniques. In fact, it was actually cold pitches that led to a regular monthly five-year stint at a local magazine. So I would be producing images like this, this, and this, as well as my first commercial job photographing for Pizza Hut. Now that appeared on billboards all over the Middle East. So once I started cold pitching, my client list grew, and not only through retainers, but also through referrals. But had I just been waiting around for clients to reach out to me, I would have given up a long time ago. Because when clients weren't reaching out to me, I would have thought, well, you know what? My skills aren't good enough. That's why these clients aren't contacting me. Or perhaps I would have thought, hey, you know what? The market's really saturated. There's too many food photographers out there, and that's why I'm not getting any work. When in fact, it wasn't a confidence issue. It wasn't a market issue. It wasn't even a skill issue, but it was actually a marketing issue. So in a very quick nutshell, that's how my food photography career started. From never having picked up a proper camera to working for restaurants, for huge brands, traveling across the world, shooting food, seeing my images in print on billboards, in cookbooks. And trust me when I say there's nothing like it. Now, I've already given you two tips so far if you're just getting started, which is to ensure that you're earning some income from food photography and getting clients before going all in and quitting your day job, as well as using the power of marketing and being proactive when you're starting your business in order to pick up momentum. Now, before I share a few other tips with you to help you take you from where you are today to a successful booked out food photographer who not only has a sustainable and thriving business, but is also making a profit, then I want to tell you about Food Photography Bootcamp. So this is my paid program where I teach my students the exact step-by-step -step framework to not only just master food photography, not just the technical and creative skills, but also how to monetize your business and start making money from it. So there's a link to the waitlist in the description box below. You can sign up for that and be the first person to know when class opens up again, and you can join hundreds of students who've taken this exact step-by-step -step roadmap to get the same kind of success that I have. Okay, on to tip number three. Now, one of the biggest takeaways that I want to tell you from my journey is to just start. Now, before you click out of this video, hear me out. Honestly, your photography is not gonna be stellar right at the beginning. When you take your first image, your first portfolio is not gonna be perfect. The first time around, your cold pitch emails will not get replies. But if you don't start, if you don't take that first step, you will never truly realize what your full potential is. Take an example of a baby. If a baby did not take its first step until it knew for sure that it wasn't gonna fall or wobble or trip up, that baby would never walk, okay? That toddler would never run. That child would never climb a single ladder. And that's the exact same thing with food photography. It's all about getting started. It's all about making that first move. It's all about getting through those first few failures and then learning from them. There really is no better teacher in food photography than actually failing. No matter how many YouTube videos you watch, no matter how many courses you take, you will never learn how to ride a bike from watching YouTube. It's all about implementing. You need to just move from that phase of consuming information to doing, to actually taking action, to practicing what you've just watched or learned. By implementing is where you're gonna see the most change, the most improvement, and the most success. So now that I've spilled my guts out about my journey, I wanna know more about you. So comment below, tell me where are you in your food photography journey right now? Are you right at the beginning, somebody who's just getting started? Are you somebody who's kind of been at it for a while, you're taking good images, but you're not getting that traction you need to start earning money and to start booking those paid clients? Or perhaps you're booking clients, but now you just truly want to scale up your business and turn it into a six-figure career. What are you struggling with most? Jump into the comments and tell me because I'd love to help you overcome these and to grow your food photography business into a thriving and profitable one. One that you are so capable of and that you so deserve. So I really hope today's video has been inspiring for you to take that first step in your journey to food photography success. Now, if you really wanna accelerate your growth, you want that step-by-step -step framework, you want somebody like myself to hold your hand through the journey, and you really just wanna take yourself from where you are to that six-figure food photography success and basically learn from somebody who's done it before, who's not only done it for myself, but also for so many of my students who've had success like this, like this, like this in their food photography business. 
then make sure you sign up to the waitlist in the description box below. Now I'll be back next week talking all about flat lays, my favorite type of food images, and how you can really master a good flat lay. So make sure you've hit the subscribe button in this corner so you know exactly when that video is gonna drop. Now I also have these two videos that I think you're really gonna enjoy. One's all about Instagram Reels and how you as a food photographer can actually grow your community and be found by paying clients, as well as another video talking all about my favorite lighting techniques for food photography. Until then, I'm gonna catch you next week.